Okay, I'm Troy Topnik. Uh, you, may me, you may remember me from such products as Active State Staccato and Helion Staccato, but I'm here to talk about SUSE Cloud application platform now, and um, more importantly, SUSE Cloud Foundry. And I want to tie on to some of Dr. Max's comments about making a thousand flowers grow because we are going to show our renewed commitment to making innovation happen upstream in Cloud Foundry. So, uh, if you may have heard, SUSE is building a Cloud Foundry uh, distribution. And one of the things that should be pretty obvious from SUSE uh, being a, uh, a Linux vendor, that, that we can't really build that on someone else's OS. So, we are in fact going to build it on SUSE Linux. And uh, we have a factory first model in our development of SUSE Linux. That means uh, we have an open source distribution called OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE Tumbleweed feeds into um, both SUSE Linux Enterprise and uh, OpenSUSE Leap. And so our upstream work is going to happen and is happening. We've got uh, a pair working on this now, getting uh, stem cells and stacks committed upstream so that anyone can, can use this. So our upstream work you will see arriving will be built on OpenSUSE and our productized work will, will be shipping on SUSE Linux Enterprise. Same code, there's a certain process by which we can, uh, we can support the SUSE Linux Enterprise much more deeply. So let's talk about where that actually goes. In a Cloud Foundry uh, implementation, you run all the Cloud Foundry roles on stem cells, on Bosch stem cells, and for as long as I can remember, well, it, forever, uh, Cloud Foundry's always run on Ubuntu. Uh, initially on Lucid and then on Trusty starting around uh, 2014. Um, but now you can, uh, you can, starting very, very soon, you'll be able to use uh, OpenSUSE uh, 42.3 uh, Bosch stem cells to run Cloud Foundry. So that's the base layer. That is the layer that runs the Cloud Foundry rules, but there's also uh, another place where the operating system is important and we make a change there too. Or we make, we don't make a change, we make an addition. Um, the concept of stacks in Cloud Foundry is extremely powerful. It uh, comes from a notion that was also around in Heroku, and uh, it's kind of a shame that, that we haven't seen this used more. We saw it used a little bit in Windows native DEAs, but uh, this is a place where OpenSUSE shows up as well. So very conveniently, the build pack design um, makes it easy for us to use the same build pack to work on multiple stacks. This is something that is different from how it was in uh, the Windows DEA and the Windows stack, but uh, we've found a way to, and it was a way that was baked into Cloud Foundry, so that a single build pack, uh, if it's packaged with the binaries for both stacks, it can work equally well on both. So um, you just have to build binaries and you have to build a lot of binaries because there are a lot of build packs and each of those build packs has a number of uh, language uh, versions in it. So we're gonna build all those binaries. SUSE can do this because uh, we've got a lot of practice building packages. We build a lot of them. We've got a lot of different versions of SUSE Linux Enterprise and we have to be able to produce certifiable builds from exactly the right sources over very, very, very many versions of different packages and very, very many versions of SUSE Linux. And our open build system um, actually packages in more than just the RPM formats that we traditionally use. So we can also produce Debian packages. We can also produce tarballs. We can produce a lot of things uh, for a lot of different platforms. And this is another thing that's very interesting. We can start using stacks and we can start using our build system to expand the, the choices in platforms that people have, the choices in architectures that people have. So we're gonna be building lots of binaries for, um, for our own distribution anyway. Uh, I'd like to offer that we would be able to help upstream with taking some of this load, which I know is quite significant off the build pack team or helping uh, use our expertise in building these packages. For, um, for building all the binaries that are required for all of the build packs. Um, another choice in what we uh, have done and uh, a sort of less expected choice for some people is that we've chosen to deploy Cloud Foundry on Kubernetes. Um, we uh, are big fans of Kubernetes. We think it's an excellent scheduler. 
Um, we've done this before. Some of us came from a team at HPE, and we, we made a containerized version of Cloud Foundry there. So we've essentially done this twice now, and we're getting pretty good at running uh, uh, Cloud Foundry on Kubernetes. So to that end, we're, we're going to be releasing a product. Uh, it's built on a containerized Cloud Foundry distribution called SCF. We're aiming for this to be a certified distribution. Um, and it's going to be built from upstream Bosch releases. So we do use Bosch. We use it to build uh, the distribution. Bosch releases um, are built on SUSE Linux Enterprise, which run on Kubernetes. Uh, CAS platform is, is our uh, implementation of Kubernetes, but you can run on others. There's no engineering reason why it doesn't. Uh, we've demonstrated that in a few different places. And we're using Helm, uh, Kubernetes Helm, for the lifecycle management. This is for the deployment of SUSE Cloud Foundry and for the upgrade and maintenance of it as well. And uh, just to sort of conclude, um, the history of, of this type of innovation is, uh, has not been always very smooth. So I started out at Active State Staccato, and we had a very early fork from the open source, uh, the open source project in 20, uh, 2011. And we did a lot of really interesting work there. But because it was not a, a completely open process and because there was a lot of stuff that was held back, it, we were found it very difficult to donate that work back upstream, to get that stuff, those innovations, which we were all very proud of. It just didn't mesh with the other upstream work that was happening at the time. With HPE Helium Staccato, there was certainly uh, a will to move closer to upstream. We had a certified CF distribution. We uh, open sourced several projects that were associated with that. But again, not everything was available upstream uh, to the upstream contributors in a way that they could actually make those innovations, bring those innovations in that, that could be shared by everyone. With SUSE, we have a mandate to work in the open all the time. So with SCF, SUSE Cloud Foundry, Stratos UI, uh, the CF Universal Service Broker, and Fissile, we would like to get all of this stuff uh, as upstream as we can, either through the extensions project or, or directly upstream. And uh, I can say that SUSE has a surprising commitment to open source because when, we, when, when a number of us joined in, in March, we, we had a, a great concern that we wanted to see a lot of our innovations going upstream. And we approached, I can't remember if it was the president of engineering or, or the CEO, and we said, if we have a good reason for something to be open source, can we make sure it's open sourced? And we were told very plainly, unless you have a very good reason for something not to be open sourced, it's going to be open sourced. So with that, I'd like to reiterate uh, uh, Dr. Max's uh, statement that we should make a thousand flowers go and please help us innovate on this this platform.